Hi everyone. Welcome to the Fire Mountain Gems and Beads Jewelry Making Studio. It's a Western kind of day. So we have lots of great products at Fire Mountain Gems for you to make. Whatever kind of Western gear you need, we're going to focus on a bolo tie today. Of course, we carry lots of different kinds of bolo supplies, lots of different faux leather and real leather to use. Not Don't limit yourself to bolos. You can make lots of things like these great bracelets, nice masculine leather bracelets, all kinds of beautiful things you can make with bolo tie besides bolos. So enjoy all the different products. I do want to point out with this faux leather braided cord like this and, and the real leather as well. If you do decide to make something that's shorter and sweeter, uh, when you go to cut this, make sure you tape where you're going to cut and then cut over the tape so that your bolo tie doesn't come unraveled on the ends and the piece you left behind doesn't come unraveled. You can see these have all been taped off so that they're not coming unraveled. Okay, so besides all these wonderful cords that we have, we've got lots of other Western supplies as well. We've got conchos available to you. We've got different kinds of bolo tips and all the colors. So you can match your bolo tie to fit the style of your bolo tie wearer. Oh, I love to have the bolo ties available because I have always struggled to find the right gift for a man. Yeah, they could be for men or women, but it's hard to find gifts for men sometimes. So even if they're only going to wear it twice a year at Western night, it's a great gift. Let me show you how easy it is to make a bolo tie. So I'm not going to cut this leather. I'm just going to use the full length of it. And the first thing I want is this slide. This is the piece that clamps down and holds your bolo tie at the length you want it to be. Super easy. Just slip your bolo cord in through these loops at the top. And you can see my slide clasp has already come open. Push it down in there a little ways, pull your cord through. And this is also how you adjust your tie for your length. You slide it up and down for whatever length you need and then push this tab closed. And that's what clamps it in place so that it doesn't go sliding off into the dance, onto the dance floor. Okay, so there we've got our, our slide. In fact, we've got a bolo tie right now. We're done, but we're going to make it much more pretty. So we're going to add, this is actually a pendant setting. It's just for hanging on a chain and making a necklace. But this time we're going to put that onto my bolo slide. And then we're going to put an imitation turquoise cabochon into that. We could use anything. We could use the red jasper cabochon. We could use cat's eyes, whatever you like. Put a cabochon in there. Matches my tie, matches my leather, looks good. And then we also want to decorate these ends a little bit too, which are just taped. Not terribly attractive. So we put the bolo tips on those. And again, I'm going to glue that in place and put them right in there. Like I said, I'm doing a lot of gluing on this and the glue I'm going to use today is the DevCon 5-Minute Epoxy. This is a wonderful two-part glue. Don't let it intimidate you. I used to be a little nervous about using two-part epoxies. Don't be intimidated by that. You just squish out a little bit of each side, A and B, stir them together, and then you have five minutes of working time five minutes to get everything placed in place, which is why I wanted to show you all the things I'm going to glue, because when it comes to glue time, I'm going to just glue my little heart out and I'm not going to be going slow. I'm just going to do it. I've got five minutes to get it all done. If you don't make it in five minutes, ah, so you have to mix up another batch. No big deals. But I'm trying to show you the efficient way to make a bolo tie. So there we have our five minute epoxy. We're going to be gluing the pendant onto the slide. We're going to be gluing the cabochon into the pendant. We're going to be gluing the tips onto the cord. You all ready for this? Let's do it. So I'm taking the, the top, top off of this. Here's a neat little tip for you too. This top only goes on one way. Make sure you put it back on the exact same way because if you mix them up, all of a sudden the glue starts to cure on your tips. Because <laughs> once part A meets part B, it starts to cure. 
So I'm going to squish out a fairly big amount because I'm going to be doing a lot of gluing. So an equal part of A and an equal part of B. And I adjust the tension on my thumbs so that I can put out equal parts. So I'm pushing on my B a little bit extra. There we go. That should be enough. And I'm carefully putting the tip back on in the same orientation. There we go. So I don't accidentally mix those two chemicals. Set that aside. And this can sit here. This can sit here until I'm good and ready to work. Because it's not going to start curing until the two parts meet each other. And you'll notice, too, that I'm also using this nice little pad over the top of this. This is a silicon, and nothing sticks to it. So this is really great to use whenever you're gluing, because then it's e real easy to peel off any glue that gets stuck on there. In fact, I've even it's great for uh, glue guns, too, like uh, hot glue. Great for that, to keep it off your table, keep it off your placemats, keep it off you. OK, so I've got my toothpick, high-tech instrument. Going to stir these two pieces, two bits of glue up. And remember, every molecule of A has to meet a molecule of B to make this start curing. It's got a little tiny bit of an odor to it. It's not really awful. Um, some people might be more sensitive to it than I am. Um, and I also, I can just see a faint bit of cloudiness when I start to mix it. And when I when it's really, really clear, then I know it is completely mixed. I usually mix this for hmm, maybe a minute. I want to make sure that a molecule of A meets a molecule of B so that it's going to all cure up and I don't have any issues. Although this is such an awesome glue, I really never have had problems with it not curing. OK, so we've got about five minutes now to work. So first thing I'm going to do is put a little bit of glue onto my pendant mount here. I don't want too much because I don't want it to squish out and come bubbling up out from underneath my cabochon. I'm going to put a little glue here for the gluing of that pendant onto my bolo tie. And the reason I'm doing all the glue first well, not all the glue. I'm going to do that glue first because that gets a chance to set for a little bit while I take care of other stuff. And then I'm going to take, I'm going to make sure I don't drop my glue anywhere because I'm doing everything at once. I'm going to get a whole bunch of glue on the end of this cord. And I'm going to pop that right into my bolo tip. Push it down in there. We have the added security of folding these little ends down. We'll do that a little bit later. Set that aside in a nice place where no glue will get out and get onto anything I don't want glue on. And then I'll put a bunch of glue on this end. Nice big blob of glue on there. And I'll pop it into my other bolo end. A little bit smooshy on the side there. If you get a little bit of slopped on there, uh, don't worry about it. You can peel it off later and or use a tissue now. And as long as it's still wet like this, a little acetone can wipe that off real easily too. I'm not going to worry about it. There we go. Set that there. And now this has gotten a little bit tacky because like I said, you only have five minutes of working time. So now is the perfect time to pop in your cabochon. Boop. Wow, is this a hard project or what? I hope I haven't uh, overtaxed you. <laughs> and then we're going to put this cab, this uh, pendant, right on top of that. It's still sliding a little bit, so I'm going to make sure it doesn't slide away on me. Make sure you get that level and even and centered and I can feel it setting up really good already okay so we'll let that rest for a little bit like I say about five minutes and like I said we have a little bit of extra security here on this slide in that we have these little bendable tips and we're going to bend those down 
for an extra grip and also just to make it look nicer. I'm using my bent chain nose pliers. I'm going on opposite sides, trying to bend them sort of equally so that they'll grip the leather cord. There we go. And it looks like I could use a little bit of acetone on there. I've smooched it a little bit. My own fingers got a little bit of glue on them. No worries. A little bit of acetone takes that out. You know what acetone is. It's just fingernail polish remover, right? Okay, just in case you didn't know that. Okay, I'm doing, going to do the same thing on this other tip. Just fold those little ends in. And you can do this kind of gradually so you get them balanced and they grip the leather. Get that out of my way so I don't put my fingers in it. And there is the basis of our bow tie. You see where I've got a little bit of, of glue right there on my mat, on my silicone pad. No worries, I can peel that off later. Okay, let's see how finished this is. Uh, it still needs to cure for a little bit, but we can go on. The next thing I want to do is just like on this one that's already completed, I'm going to add a little bit of a chain dangle with some feathers. And I've already cut two pieces of chain off of this big mass of chain. And as we've said many times in many videos, I'm going to use some jump rings. And with jump rings, you always twist them open. Don't pull them open. So I'm using two pairs of pliers. Twist that jump ring open. Put it on my feather. and onto my chain. Twist the jump ring closed. Do the same thing with my other jump ring. Twist it open. Put on the feather. Put on the chain and twist it closed. And then on the top of our bolo, I'm going to use a slightly bigger jump ring. Most people will be grateful to see a big jump ring. <laughs> a lot of people have trouble with little jump rings. Open that up, twist it open, add my Add the other ch end of that chain. Yes, I can. There we go. Add the second chain. It just fits. There we go. And then this will go on to the top of my pendant. I'm going to twist it open a little bit more. That's a pretty big loop at the top of that pendant. And twist it closed. There we have it. Now I had five minutes of working time. And I've used my five minutes of working time. But it still needs a little bit more curing time to be really ready to, to tug and pull on and get crazy with. So, so give it a little bit of more time before you put a lot of strain on this. You notice I'm holding it all down while I get this chain out here where I want it. There you have it. A bolo tie for you or your mate or just any friend of yours. Thanks for joining me at the Fire Mountain Gems and Beads Jewelry Making Studio. 
My name is Rose, and I hope you enjoyed this tip and all the other wonderful tips and products available at firematandgems.com. Happy beating!